The situation of the second seat at Red Bull for 2025 is still a complete mystery, and despite Sergio Perez's almost perfect start to the season, Red Bull are avoiding committing to anything yet. With the driver's market in complete flux this season, Red Bull are keeping their cards close to their chest. Sergio Perez, though, is pushing hard for the team to confirm his place for next season. After all, who wouldn't want to drive in the best car on the grid right now? Today, I'm going to check out what happened at the Chinese Grand Prix, what Sergio Perez had to say about his position for next season, and how Christian Horner has completely shut him down. So, don't go anywhere. The Chinese Grand Prix was stacked full of action, though obviously not at the front of the grid, where Max Verstappen drove to another comfortable victory, continuing his complete domination of the grid. An absolutely shocking stat that came out of the weekend was that since the last time F1 raced in China in 2019, Max has won 50% of all races. That's 53 race wins while the rest of the grid has a combined total of 53. It's wild to think that it's possible considering the 2019 Chinese Grand Prix was the third race of that season, meaning Mercedes blew everyone out of the water for two of the seasons that that fact covers. While the coverage only occasionally showed Max on screen, normally just to remark how far ahead he was, behind him there was plenty happening. The bitumen that had been painted on the track surface before the race weekend meant that tyre strategy wasn't the normal solved equation that it can be for a Grand Prix, which meant plenty of teams were playing it by ear as the race went on. Aston Martin tried to get Alonso onto some soft tyres halfway through the race to make up some positions which backfired, thanks to some pretty appalling driving from Kevin Magnussen, which meant that Yuki Tsunoda needed to be recovered by the crane and the safety car had to come out. It was Alonso's teammate who took the title as the worst driver of the day, though. Lance Stroll's attempts to blame the cars in front of him for his shunt into Daniel Ricciardo were ridiculed. That shunt also destroyed Oscar Piastri's diffuser, meaning Lance managed to ruin two other drivers' races as well as his own. Daniel Ricciardo was absolutely fuming after the race. He's had a terrible season so far, but in China, he was on his way to earning his second point finish since his return to the sport, a result that he desperately needed. When it was put to him by the media that Lance had tried to blame him, he said, Apparently, I'm an idiot and it was my fault, so that made my blood boil because it's clear as day and it's also behind a safety car. He said far worse than that in other interviews, but YouTube will have a go at me if I repeat what he said. Oscar Piastri has gained a reputation for being a straight talker on a level we haven't enjoyed since Kimi Raikkonen was in F1, and after the race, he reinforced that with his comments about the incident. When asked about Stroll's claim that everyone in front of him suddenly braked, Oscar said, Yes, but everyone else didn't crash into each other. Pretty hard to argue with that, isn't it? While the safety cars ruined Alonso's push for a podium finish, they were a great benefit to Lando Norris, who had run very long on his first stint on the medium tyres, to make a one-stop strategy work to perfection, holding on to a very impressive second place. That singular stop, one less than Sergio Perez, made all the difference, as Lando finished five and a half seconds ahead of the Red Bull driver. Third place is not a bad result for Checo at all. He drove a good race and made some big points for Red Bull. What more can be asked of a driver? Yet the question that always comes back to him is, how did Max finish so far ahead? After Checo passed Alonso for second place on lap 5, Max was already 5 seconds up the road. That's fine, Perez was in a battle with the best defensive driver in F1. Alonso held him up roughly a second a lap, which is completely reasonable. For the following eight laps, though, before both Red Bull drivers pitted, Max lapped half a second quicker than Sergio, so by lap 13, he was 10 seconds ahead of his teammate. The next demonstration of Verstappen's superiority came three laps later, when he caught and passed Charles Leclerc. Charles was yet to pit, which means that Max had made up a pit stop's worth of race time over a man battling for the final podium place in just 16 laps. After that, he calmly navigated the rest of the race, well clear of the rest of the field, to take his fourth win in five races this year and be victorious in all the events he's finished. There is no way that Perez can ever match up to the level that Max is currently at. Some people might argue that this driver or that could offer Max more of a challenge if they were at Red Bull, but without any kind of evidence, that's a tough point to prove. Unsurprisingly, Max's team principal Christian Horner couldn't be happier with the performance of his main man. 
Horner described Max as almost unhuman following the Chinese Grand Prix. Reflecting on Verstappen's performance, Horner told Sky Sports F1, He has been on fantastic form all weekend. Max is on another planet. His form is fantastic. It varies from circuit to circuit, but he's totally at one with the machine. He has unbelievable feel and empathy with the car, the feel, the conditions. He has confidence in himself. He has the ability to understand the tires, what they need, when they need to be pushed and saved. He has an incredible racing brain. It's almost unhuman what he's capable of. It's a pleasure to work with. He's writing history. Max's place at the team is obviously guaranteed. Assuming he wants to stay, Red Bull are going to give him the absolute world to keep him there. Against the force that is Max, Sergio is really doing everything he can to earn his place at the team. With his contract up at the end of the season, Checo is pushing as hard as he can to secure his place. In China, he put pressure on Horner to sign him for 2025 by saying, Certainly, things are moving along, Perez said. I think the whole market is. We're going to be making decisions fairly quickly. In the coming weeks, I expect everything to be to know my future in the coming weeks. Everything is going fast, so I think it's important not to wait for too long. However, Christian Horner hit back at him, insisting that the team are not interested in making a quick decision at all. Of course, he would like an announcement tomorrow, undoubtedly, but we the team aren't in a particular rush, Horner countered. We're in a fortunate position where many drivers would obviously like to drive for the team, but we're happy with the pairing that we have. We just want to make sure that the level of consistency that Checo has started with this season maintains, and in due course, we'll evaluate these options. But as I say, at this point in time, we're very happy with the lineup that we have, so there's no imminent rush to announce the full driver lineup for 2025. For Christian Horner, Carlos Sainz is a target. He's highlighted multiple times already that he's the only driver to have beaten Red Bull since 2022, something which surely makes him the most tempting option as a replacement for Sergio Perez, if Red Bull decides to take that option. Nico Rosberg said during the weekend's coverage that he had seen Carlos Sainz Sr. in conversation with Christian Horner, and that Red Bull had apparently already made an offer to Sainz, but the money wasn't that good, so the Sainz camp were trying to negotiate more out of them. In terms of options for Sainz, Red Bull is definitely the most tempting. It is the best car on the grid, and above all else, winning is what F1 drivers want to do. Carlos is the most desirable driver on the grid and has suitors everywhere, but given the choice, Red Bull would definitely be where he wants to end up. For Sergio to be let go by Red Bull would be absolutely brutal considering how well he has performed since his dip in form last season. But for Red Bull, they have to always be chasing any advantage they can get to stay ahead of the rest of the grid, and if that means bringing in signs for Perez, then so be it. What do you think of Horner insisting that Red Bull want to keep playing the field? Has Perez done enough to deserve that seat, even if Sainz is available? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.